Okay, we're gonna bring you another DIY vlog type video. And the lighting might look weird because we actually warmed up the lights. These LEDs are temperature adjustable um, because we're not gonna actually use these when filming. So for vlogs and stuff, it's gonna look really bad and I apologize. So the audio, because I'm not wearing a mic. Anyway, as you can see here, we've got some cabinets and stuff put together. This is where the PC building slash review area is gonna be. A much more cleaner environment that when it's just assembling a computer on to be out in the dirty shop. But uh, there's some DIY stuff that I wanna do and I figured we'd take you guys along for the ride just like I did with my um, home build that I did in that game room. Maybe it'll inspire some thoughts. So get inspired right after this ad. The new H7 series from NZXT offers tempered glass side panels, toolless panel removal for easy installation, front and top side 360 millimeter radio support, and integrated cable management bar for clean cable installs. To see the complete feature set and variations of the H7 available, including the H7 Flow, follow the link in the description below. So here we go, this is some of the, the IKEA Broar, B-R-O-R, Broar stuff. I went with it for a couple of reasons. One, it was available. Um, I thought about originally doing like a garage cabinetry setup thing, but that was uh, gonna take way too long and it was way too expensive. So one of the things that I did already is we stained the top. This is just plywood that comes with it. But I stained the top a little bit darker, that way it matches. But what I wanna do is I wanna come up with, not a pegboard, but sort of a slat wall thing to go here. And I was actually inspired by living spaces because they, they use these kind of slat walls that they build as partitions to go between certain areas. And I went, I could do something like that, but I want to use it here. And then what I could even do is put some nails or some screws in it and I could hang like basic tools from it like it's some sort of a, of a pegboard, but it's a little bit more classy to kind of fit the space of what we got going on here. So now we're going to transition out to our shop, which is perfect example of why I am do have this set up this way now. This would be the clean environment and then we've got the messy environment, which is where we're going to go now. So this is something that could get out of control really fast regarding cost. So that's why the wood that I chose is actually just a basic um, pine. So let me show you the wood. <clears throat> These need to be cut down to size and I already measured the rough size I want it to be in that space. And I think it was 60 by 35, which is inches. 60 by 36. So 60 inches high, and I'm gonna be spacing them out, right? So it, it's, gonna, it's gonna probably look like a fancy pallet on the wall, but that's fine. I, I don't wanna use a pallet. By the way, talk about outdoor dog beds. I did use a pallet for my dogs, and then, uh, cause they have an outdoor area that's covered. And I used a pallet that I then screwed down artificial turf to, which gets them up off the ground and then they like laying on it. So I just figured I'd share. But anyway, pallets have a lot of use other than just moving stuff on. None of this wood is gonna be perfect. And this is actually the finished wood, which is kind of ironic. But the problem is all the wood gets damp and then it will warp. So what I've got to figure out here is how many boards do I need? to get the 60 inches that I want. In fact, let me measure the depth of this table. That might be a good, might be a good marker. Oh, this table is only 42 inches deep. Well, I'm not gonna be building it on the table anyway because I have to stain the wood and have to cut it down first. The length of these boards though are 72 inches. So I've got to cut one foot off of each of these boards. That's good, that'd be easy. So, Actually, what I need to do is I need to cut these pieces here, which I'm using as kind of a frame. These are what I need to cut down to 30 inches, and then I can use that, or not 30 inches, sorry, 60 inches, and then I can use that as my, and 60 inches is five feet, by the way, if you're wondering. I know that doesn't help you if you only speak centimeters and meters, but uh, let me mark that. I have to mark them all because I don't, I'm just gonna be using my, my radial arm saw which doesn't have like, you know, I don't, I don't have a long table that I could just put a stop on and just slide the boards in and cut, slide in and cut. Trust me, I'd love to have a full on wood shop. I love doing woodworking. I love working with wood. None of this has to be exact science, by the way. I mean, I guess it depends on what you're using. I use the cheaper wood. You could use a redwood, an oak. I also went with this pine because it's lighter. I would have gone with redwood because it's the lightest wood of, of all the slats, but um, the problem is it's very expensive. The Redwood was like $23 a board. And I was like, there's no way I'm gonna do all that. 
All materials in on this right now, about $180, but that includes other things we needed for the shop. So I, I'm pretty sure I already had brad nails and whatnot. I'll be using my air gun to assemble this, but it's one of those things where it could have been cheaper if I already didn't buy some extras of things. So those are marked. Let me mark all of these boards one foot shorter. That way we can then get to cutting, get to staining, get to sanding. We need all these edges. That's the thing with pine, especially. You see all these edges that are sticking up? This would be a splinter nightmare. So I will be sanding all these edges here. And uh, I will also be looking at the wood. It's all gonna have some sort of bend to it. This one's pretty straight, actually. It's not too bad. Some of them, though, as you can see, like this here, right? So I'll probably end up it like that. And the other thing too is I've got to come up with a mounting mechanism. What on earth is this? I've got to come up with a mounting mechanism to get it on the wall, which is what these extra pieces are going to be for, the, the cross pieces. I'll probably have two cross pieces, potentially holes drilled through that, going into anchors into the sheetrock. So one thing I want to point out is even though these boards are pre-measured, pre um, they are all different lengths. Check this out. So look at this. Look at the end right there. They're not all the same length. Same thing with uh, these boards here actually seem, ironically, pretty much, well, you can see a few boards here on this end are a little bit longer. So what I've done is I've butted up the ends of them, measured 60 inches, and then drew a line all the way across, and then I clamped them together. That way I can more easily do a single cut to cut through all the boards, because this would be more like a four by four, uh, pretty close to a four by four size. My saw will handle that no problem. That way, instead of having to sit here and measure them all out one by one and do a ton of cuts, I only have to do two at that point. So, little tip there. I just gotta make sure those little spot. Uh, this should be okay. I can put some tape around that end because uh, I need the clamps to also not interfere with the cutting surface of the, of the saw. Also, too, if you know you have a side that's gonna be waste, put your worst ends on there. Like, see how some of these ends are all messed up? There's knots, there's splits. You wanna cut off any of the crap that you're not planning on keeping. Some of the knots and things I left on here for character. Um, pine is kind of crappy wood, but it's cheap and it's light. And that's why a lot of people like to use it. That's why a lot of furniture is made out of it. So I just thought I'd point that out. But I thought about, I really thought about going with a better nicer wood, but I just, then it wouldn't be worth even spending the money on it in my opinion. This is just, because I enjoy doing this kind of stuff, this DIY, you know, I mean, the way it turned out in my home office game room was pretty good, like with the backboard TV mount thing that I did, uh, inspired a lot of people and I want to do that again. Let's go cut. So now I'm just gonna use, uh, this is a pretty worn out sandpaper, which is good. I don't wanna really sand it too much. I just wanna sand the edges, get all the splinters off. Sanded down all my boards, cut off the ends, made them smooth, deeper, or I got as much of the splinter material off as I could. I cut two 30 inch Wait, are they 30 or 36? Did I just screw that up? Oh yeah, they should have been 36 inches, not 30. So these will be used for the cross pieces for hanging them. But now this is why I got multiples of them. So let me cut down two more, actually three more pieces at 36 inches. I kind of am going through now and picking the wood that I want to use. I got more boards than I need because I wanted to be able to kind of pick and choose the grains and stuff that I wanted to mix and match. And like I said, at the end of the day, this is gonna look like a palette that's stained and looks pretty. But once you put it on the wall and then you imagine it with like maybe some screwdrivers and other pegboard type stuff, which looks way better than this. It'll be more organized than this, don't worry. Um, it really doesn't look right until you stain it. And that's, that's what I'm excited for. So let me go ahead and get this cut down to the right size because I measured once, cut once. It's always measure twice, cut once. You can always make it shorter, but you can't make it longer. One thing I want to point out too is always sand with the grain, not against the grain. Um, that might seem like 
common sense to a lot of people, but it, it, believe it or not, if you go against the grain, then you cause all kinds of grooves and marks in the grain. So always go with the grain. Okay, so a total first take of never having made a mistake in this video. Totally did everything right the first time. Uh, we're back to where we were. So now I know that this is the height we're dealing with. I can start laying out my boards. I'm thinking one board width between will be a pretty, pretty good gap. I don't want too much of a gap, but I also don't want it like solid either. I could go solid, but I don't want to go solid. I want to just, I just use one of the little bits I chopped off as a little shim. And I should have another one put somewhere. I guess I could use the 30 inch ones that I made. I totally did make it short. Yeah, I could totally use that as a sh as shim as I'm like nailing it down. But this will also tell me like how many of them that I need. And this is why we lay it out before we commit to it. This doesn't seem like a bad gap because then you'll see the gray wall through it still. And I was actually debating doing some lighting in there that shines up through the backside and lights up the wall behind it. Although some of these are not exactly the same length. And that's fine. This is, I'm not in, intending it to all be perfect. In fact, one of the things I did on my, my board at home was I, I sanded grooves in it. So it looked all worn out over time. Like I intentionally made it look more rustic. I'm not going for rustic on this one, but it doesn't have to be perfect, it's wood. Come on, people, it's wood. Yeah, that's perfect, look at that. I might have to chop this down a little bit, but if that gap, if I scooch it all down like that, I think I can fit one more board up there. There we go, so I think that spacing will work great, personally. So that's what the board will look like, only it'll be stained. What I've gotta do now is I've got to get my first piece on here. Hang on to these shims. That's basically what I'm calling them, these are shims. I'm only gonna put one nail. And I'm, you see how I'm insetting it a little bit? Like, maybe like 10 millimeters on each side? Because I showed you the boards are still not perfect length with each other. I wanna make sure that they don't overhang too far. And by me, by me putting only one nail on the bottom, means I'll be able to square it up as I do the next board and then put more nails in as we go. Whew. Barely short enough to know. They might go through into the board. They might go into my work my, my workbench. I don't know, we'll see. We'll find out real quick if they're gonna. Just one nail. Aha! We're good. I was expecting it to just not move because I, I expected me to be the kind of person that was gonna accidentally nail it to the workbench, you know? Just one nail. Now, if I wanted to do this right, I would get nail filler and fill that in, but this is perfectly fine. Remember, this is still a YouTube backdrop. I mean, it's not intended to be anything super special. I wanna make sure I have these as square as possible because once I put in that second screw, it's gonna be more or less boxed in and I won't be able to change the angle of it farther down the line, so. Yeah, see how it's like sticking out on this side? It means I obviously have to Square that up. There we go. We'll just go ahead and go through and do this all the way down. Now one of the things that I had done here, you can see, is I had clamped it down to the table. so way it couldn't move. Oh, I think a couple. Oh no, it's just heavy. Okay, cool. It didn't actually nail itself to the table. That's a good thing. So you can see some of the boards are a little bit longer, like this one's quite a bit longer. I could actually take my, hat, my hand saw and do it, or I'll just leave it with character. You can see this one's shorter, so it definitely looks handmade, as you would expect. Check that out. So now I'm gonna lay it down flat. Because I know the, the, board, the nails don't go through, I'm just gonna put nails in from both sides now. Like if I were gonna do this properly, what I would do is I would have actually had a table saw. I would have cut a joint into this, like a, like a 45, which I can do with that. No, I can't, I need a table saw. And then I would hang a piece of wood that had a matching angle to it. That way they would like, they would like con connect into each other and they would just hang on itself. But I don't, I don't have a table saw to do that kind of long 
angled cut. That is pretty much it for the build. Now we need to make it pretty, which means we need to stain it. Look at that. Fanciest palette you'll ever find. But now you can imagine this on the back wall in that spot. Before I stain it, let's go, let's go put it up in the spot and see how it looks. Oh, that's a wall. That's, there we go, just like that. And we'll center it. That's gonna look good, huh? Yeah. It's gonna be matching wood. That's why I said I'm really thinking about doing a strip light along the bottom, shining up through it. I really like this stain from Mini Wax. Um, it's an indoor water-based, not an oil-based, that dries really fast, like 20, 30 minutes. So, obviously gonna do the front side first. I got a brush specifically designed for all stains, because the problem with some oil stains is it'll pull the bristles right out of the brush. This is the boring part. So as you can see, I'm just applying it, getting it in all the grooves. We'll come back when it's all done, because then we're gonna have to wipe it all off. You can see already the color, it's gonna look so good. So it's pretty much already dry to the touch. It's still slightly damp. I'm not getting any brown to come up on my hands. Like I said, it is a 15 minute stain. I didn't go nuts on the back. None of this is gonna show, honestly. I don't think I'm completely done with it though. I still think I'm gonna put, and I need to go to Home Depot and get another rail. If I hadn't cut that piece wrong, I would have had it. I wanna put a channel along the bottom that I could put a strip light on shining up. That way it's backlit. And I think it'll look cool. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this actually sit here and dry overnight with the fan on it. That way uh, it is 100% dry and we're handling it and not getting stained on anything. So for you guys, um, it's gonna continue on being done tomorrow. For us, we're gonna end for the day and I'm gonna get the piece that I need and the light. That way we can have it uh, sort of all together. So with the magic of editing, it's the next day tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. Here's how the back looks. I didn't stain the backside obviously because it wasn't all that important. But I did get the other piece of wood that I said I needed, the stuff to hang it. Uh, but I'm not done yet because, remember how I said I wanted to RGB this bitch? Well, that's what we're gonna do today. So I need to chop this and then I'm gonna put the strip along here pointing up. I had thought about like literally having the strip come all the way around, which I guess I could still do. And then I would just have to use this a wire channel, this guy. This is what I'm gonna to use to get it behind the cabinet. And I'll be painting this to match the wall. That way it'll kind of come off the corner. It's one of these guys. It's just a basic Govi Wi-Fi LED strip. Pretty basic. I won't even bother staining this because I'm not gonna see it. It's gonna be in the center of that board and you won't really see it down through. So before I can mount the light and stuff, I got these, these long screws, they're three inch screws. And I've just got these uh, drywall anchors. So these basically screw into the drywall and the screw screws into that. Trash cans out, trash trucks out there. I apologize for the noise. And then I'm gonna drill four, court, four holes in the corner through there into the wall so I can put the anchors in. So I basically had this figured out. So the gap was about the same all the way around. So what I have to do now is I'm gonna drill straight through the corners, all the way to the wall, that way, the holes go through the wood, through the cross brace, into the drywall. That way I know that the holes will line up once the anchors are in there. So now what we have are four holes, one in each corner of the board, and four matching holes right here on the wall. So now those holes will line up no matter what, as long as it didn't get scooted from the time I drilled that hole to the rest. So let's talk about anchor types real quick. These will be fine for what I'm doing because all the force on this is coming straight down. I'm just gonna be putting some light, like screwdrivers and stuff, made some little trays on here, nothing heavy. If you were doing like a TV or something on this, I'd go with a full on toggle or maybe a flare opening on the back and not the kind of plastic that exposes or expands when you put the screw in, but the kind that actually has a, a it, you compress it and it opens up and then it clamps against the sheetrock because if you're mounting a TV or something heavy that has outward force, 
because it's mounted away from the wall, then it could pull out of the drywall. So these are fine for what we're doing, but obviously depending on your kind of drywall and the thickness and stuff, you need to make sure you're using the right stuff. It also drills its own hole as it goes. See, I just got this kind of a point. That shows you how soft sheetrock is. Because the hole is small enough just to let the tip in there, uh, ladies, you can just let it do the rest. There we go. And the nice thing is since this wall has insulation in it, it grabs that insulation and just fills that gap even more. So it actually makes it stronger than if it were just drywall without insulation. So this is just a basic Gobi light. I, I've really started to like Gobi. It's better than LifeX in my opinion. I've had so many problems with LifeX lights. It's cheaper than Philips Hue. It doesn't require a hub. It just connects to your wireless. You can control it via the app. I just wish they didn't have white cables. And now I just gotta go around and stick it down. So this part's really boring. We'll show you when it's done. So I didn't actually waste a lot. See, that's, that's the amount that's left. So, cool. Ooh, Ooh. gamer, gamer wood. <laughs> Super gamer wood. Oh, this is sound actually, this is party mode. Ba, 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 ba. Wait, really? Ba, 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 ba. Ah! Ah! ah. Pop and lock. There we go. Oh, I just ripped my pants. Oh yeah, right there, big ol'. <laughs> Yeah, I ripped my pants. Sick. Okay, well, good thing I'm going to the gym today because I brought shorts with me, so I'm gonna go change. <laughs> it's still sound activated. <laughs> so you can see my little conduit cover right there. And then I just double side decided to take this down here. I hate that it's white. I wish it were black, but I think once there's stuff on here, because this won't be just left empty. Because that's what's awesome about DIY. DIY is literally do it yourself. And I see a lot of times in comments and videos like this that are like, I wouldn't do that, I would do blah, blah, blah. It's like, but that's the emphasis on the IY. It yourself, you know? Do what you would do. That way it fits your design philosophies and needs. So while I now focus on getting my OCD satisfied by getting this as centered as possible, you can satisfy your need to subscribe to this channel for more stuff like this and ripped pants and who knows what else. All right, guys, we're done. This project is done. And uh, I think you should share with me on Twitter whatever ideas you've come up with. I know it looks like a palette. It's just a really fancy RGB palette, gamer palette. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.